The PZL-230 Scorpion can be considered a modern and upgraded version of the A-10 Thunderbolt II, which is why it is called the A-10 Killer. With its two jet engines installed on the upper fuselage, the Scorpion improved the A-10's takeoff and landing capabilities and increased speed and agility in the air. It advanced the idea of a tough and swift attack aircraft. The canard-style construction and modular design also allowed for greater versatility and easier maintenance. With its state-of-the-art avionics, the Scorpion represented a significant advancement over the A-10, offering improved capabilities for modern air combat missions. It might come as a surprise to you, but this weapon of a jet was designed by Poland at the end of the Cold War. The PZL-230 Scorpion was a prototype jet aircraft which very nearly saw production. The Scorpion was a compact aircraft as it was just 32 feet long. It had a single pilot and was designed to carry both Warsaw Pact and NATO munitions. The advanced aircraft was to use lightweight composite materials and fly-by-wire electronics. Yet at the same time, the Scorpion was designed to be an affordable, easy to build and well armored for good survivability. It was also designed to be able to take off and land on comparably short runways. The project of designing the PZL-230 Scorpion was started in the late 1980s by PZL. Before the start of World War II, Poland had a thriving aircraft sector. The majority of military aircraft at the time, including fighters, bombers, reconnaissance aircraft, attack aircraft and seaplanes, were developed and produced in the nation. It was PZL that was the largest manufacturer of aviation technology in the period between the two world wars, while Polish-made aircraft were in service not only with the Polish Air Force, but were also exported to other European countries. Many of the Polish designers' concepts, however, remained unfinished for years due to the war, and many of their plans never came to realization at all. Independent aircraft development in Poland was hardly ever done in the post-war era, up until the fall of the USSR and the dissolution of the Warsaw Treaty Organization. Until that moment, the nation's military made extensive use of aircraft and helicopters built in the Soviet Union. However, the Polish military was obliged to turn to their own aircraft designers due to the shifting foreign policy environment towards the end of the 1980s. The development of Polish combat aircraft was required. The Polish military in particular anticipated receiving an aircraft for direct fire support of its combatants. When creating a new aircraft, its developers took into account the experience of modern war. The Polish designers paid particular close attention to the practical application of attack aircraft in the wars in Vietnam and Afghanistan. Initially, the design brief called for a ground attack aircraft with a top speed of 400 miles per hour and weapons capacity of 4,400 pounds. However, in 1990, the brief Polish Ministry of Defense altered its request and called for a 620 mile per hour maximum speed and an 8,800 pound munitions capacity. These new requirements meant the aircraft became heavier and the landing strip length required for takeoff and landing increased from 820 feet to 1,312 feet. The redesign also included some adjustments which gave the aircraft a small degree of stealth capability. As the PZ-230 Scorpion initially was designed to be a light attack and observation aircraft, it needed an engine that would provide adequate power while also being compact and lightweight. The twin turboprop engine was the focal point of the original aircraft designs. Pratt & Whitney Canada's PT-6A-67A engine was once chosen to power the type. However, after the required weapons capacity and maximum drastically increased, the initial design was in need of another engine as well. A pair of Pratt & Whitney Canada PW-305 turbofan engines powered the updated aircraft instead. It was planned that the new attack aircraft could make a controlled flight at angles of attack up to 50 degrees. The plane should have performed a turn of 180 degrees in just five seconds. A full-size model of the new PZL-230 Scorpion attack aircraft was built in the second half of 1992. Even then, the appearance of a new plane riveted the views of others. The pitch longitudinal controls of the aircraft are placed in front of its center of gravity in accordance with the aerodynamic duck design. Using this system enables pitch control without reducing lift or balancing. The best cargo capacity per unit wing area and pitch maneuverability are found in aircraft built in accordance with this scheme. 
Higher load-bearing capabilities and improved aerodynamics are provided by this aerodynamic arrangement. The PZL230 Scorpion stood out for having a flawless wing and fuselage fit. The plane had a V-shaped vertical tail. The aircraft's tail section held independent gondolas with jet engines mounted on them. The airframe attack aircraft was built primarily using composite materials. Individual stealth technology components were also implemented by Polish designers. Compared to the earlier plans, the airplane body was made flatter. There were essentially no projections and side planes on it, which would operate as natural reflectors of electromagnetic radiation. The cockpit Martin Baker MK-10L was installed in the cockpit with a slope of 34 degrees. In this chair, the pilot could withstand overloads up to 9G. The cockpit was armored and supposed to protect the pilot from bullets reaching up to 12 7 mm caliber. The PZL-230 was an ambitious project for Poland. Detractors contended that it was overly ambitious from the start. A full-size mock-up of the prospective attack aircraft was built throughout the project, however, due to defense budget cuts in 1994, the project was abandoned. The nation's economy, which went through the process of changing from a communist to a capitalist paradigm, was unable to support continued development of its own combat aircraft. It was simply cheaper to buy American aircraft than design and produce aircraft themselves. This eventually resulted in the funding being pulled, despite PZL's efforts to keep the project going. In December 1994, the project was shut down, depriving the world of the chance to ever see this scorpion fly. At the time, the nation's development priorities unfortunately did not indicate any significant military investment. The military was just not the government's top priority after everything that had happened until that point. Many believe the PZL-230 had the potential to develop into a highly effective multi-role attack aircraft, maybe earning the same tank killer reputation as the A-10 Thunderbolt. It is also believed that the aircraft's comparatively inexpensive unit cost may have helped it become a popular export and provide the Polish nation with much-needed money. Either way, it was one of the most advanced aircraft Poland almost built. No other trainer or attack aircraft in the Polish Air Force's inventory came close to matching the PZL-230 Scorpion's adaptability and capabilities. The PZL-104 Wilga was a light utility aircraft as an illustration, but it lacked the Scorpion's level of sophistication. The TS-11 Iskra, a jet trainer, was another option, but it lacked the Scorpion's level of combat prowess. On the other hand, while the Su-22 was a highly effective attack aircraft, it lacked the Scorpion's adaptability and simplicity of use. The Scorpion was in a league of its own and, compared to these aircraft, provided the ideal mix of training and combat capabilities.